Looking ahead in a troubled world Riding the train with a beautiful girl And everything changes And everything dies Dreams are out of the round And I still love you Tune the pegs and swing my rest And every little moment comes down to this And everything broken Is gonna be alright Dreams, Lord, I've had mine A little bit bald and battered in time Better be brave ten feet tall And shine for us all Looking ahead in a troubled world Riding the train with a beautiful girl Everything changes, everything dies Dreams are rattle around and I still Bombs and bullets project across The children run and we get lost Watching the news Report the pain and Holy Mary, dear Mother of God Pray for us all as we bumble and plod We try to learn the heart of heart Turn our sorrow into art Looking ahead in a troubled world Riding the train with a beautiful girl Everything changes Everything dies Dreams are rattle around I And that was Riding the Train by Joe Crookston. And Joe is going to be performing at Roots on the River not once, but twice coming up June 3rd, 4th, and 5th. He'll be playing on the 4th and the 5th Saturday a solo set and on the full gospel hour as well. And we have Joe on the phone. Hello, Joe. Hi there. So good to be talking to you. Awesome that you're coming to Roots. Have you been to this area? I was there. I was in Bellows Falls one time. I played at the Opera House once opening for uh, a group at the Opera House, and I loved it, and I want to come back. It was like the Cowboy Junkies played there, and oh, I yeah. opened for them, and I've been hoping to come back ever since. So I'm very excited that Ray invited me, and uh, it's a great festival. Super excited to be there. And you're playing the set right after your pals Spite and Dival? Oh, Spite and Dival, yeah. They're good friends of mine and a uh, fun band. They you know, have a lot of great energy on stage, and uh, yeah, they're good friends of mine. And you're also kind of buds with Mary Gaucher. Yeah, yeah, I definitely have gotten to know her over the years, and um, I've uh, recorded one of her songs, Mercy Now, and I think she's a brilliant songwriter and a great person. I'm excited to be there with her, too, and who knows, maybe, I guess, maybe share a little time on the Sunday morning stage with her? Yeah, I hope so. The The Meeting House is just a magic place. I've heard about it. I've heard that space is beautiful to sing in, uh, the acoustics in there and everything, so I'm, I'm going to bring my best. Outstanding. <laughs> Let's start at the beginning. You were born and raised in rural Ohio on polka and Eastern European food. Yeah, in Northeast Ohio and kind of Eastern European territory. And my mom was an accordion player and a songwriter. I grew up with her 
playing her G, C, D chords and occasional E minor. I didn't, I wasn't really interested in what she was doing at the time, but then it guess it absorbed into me by osmosis. And I, I learned a lot about maybe the importance of being creative and that creativity and songwriting as kind of a, almost a spiritual process, you know, of delving into the inner world and, and, and connecting with people. The uh, Kent State Folk Festival while you were at college, that seems like it was a turning point. Yeah, totally. I was studying classical guitar and then technique, and uh, a friend of mine said, do you want to go to the Kent State Folk Festival? And I was like, I don't even know what that is, you know? <laughs> and heard people like Nancy Griffith and the Horseflies from Ithaca, New York, and John McCutcheon, who is a great story songwriter. And basically at that moment, I was like, oh, this is what I want to do. You know, I learned learning the guitar and technique, but really what I wanted to do was tell stories and connect with mm-hmm. communities in, in that way. So, yeah, it started my it started my journey towards folk music. And you're pretty much doing the uh, straight-up man with a guitar folky troubadour tradition, humor, pathos, uh, common man. Um, well, I, you know, I would say that um, my live shows, I play violin. I do a lot of fiddle violin singing with my fiddle, my looper. Um, I play a lot of slide guitar, banjo, and guitar uh, finger picking. I'd say my shows are, hmm, how do I say this? That the spirit of the music is anchored in the kind of tradition of storytelling, but I'm very interested in pushing it into the realms that are interesting sonically for me and musically and creatively. So I bring my paintings, I put up paintings, I have a Mm. Uh, a projection screen that I'll do some video. So for me, there's this kind of almost multimedia quality when I'm performing of my violin, my slide guitar, the the artwork. And to me, you know, I would say one of my greatest quotes is when people say, I hate folk music, it's so boring, but I love what you do. <laughs> and I think what happens sometimes is people sort of put the folk music in a, in a box, and I think it becomes kind of like a stereotype of itself. Yeah. And I guess for me, I'm really turned on and excited by exploring how far I can kind of like create sounds and sonic landscapes and storytelling in a way that really is kind of high energy and creative, as creative as can be. So, yeah, I would say that I'm I'm very connected to the tradition of the troubadour, but I am in no way trying to replicate what others have done. You know, mm-hmm. that's not what I'm interested in. I'm interested in kind of discovering my own way of doing it. I use duct tape on my guitar <laughs> to give cool sounds. I play in my fiddle and singing with it. And I love sound. I love the sound of instruments. You know, I, I spend a lot of time creating these little soundscapes, even live. You know, I feel like it's not just about strumming the chord and telling the story. It's about creating an, a musical environment that's exciting to be in. So I love that. You got a lot of acclaim, I mean, just right out of the gate. Your first label album, Performing Songwriter Magazine, selected it as one of the top 12 self-produced indies of 2004. You got a bunch of big-time uh, exposure, NPR, Midnight Special, Folk Scene, in 2007, you got that Rockefeller grant for Songs of the Finger Lakes. You want to talk about that? Yeah. So I moved to Ithaca, New York, and there was a, a grant opportunity that came up where there was basically, it came from a payola. So you'd be interested in this as a DJ. It was a <laughs> payola settlement for um, Sony BMG was fined a couple million dollars or whatever for payola. And they were required to make money available for New York state artists to do projects as a way to kind of give back to the community. So it was a lengthy, you know, filling out an application and the whole thing and submitting. And I received a grant. What do I want to do with my life? I want to be Woody Guthrie. I want to travel around and I want to interview people and I want to learn about New York state and then write original songs based on that. So I did for a year, I traveled around the rural parts of New York state and upstate and central New York. And I, um, interviewed people and I wrote original songs. And what's kind of amazing is that that record uh, that came out with most of those is called Abel, Baker, Charlie, and Dog. (laughs) And that recording was given the album of the year by the uh, 
International Folk Alliance, which was kind of amazing. But there's a lot of story songs on there, and some of them are being made into films now. Mm. And there's a, a song about a Holocaust survivor, Dina, who became a good friend of mine. And uh, I, I would say that it was just a great opportunity for me to dig deeper into into who I was as an artist and as a writer, as a storyteller. It really was a great opportunity. So yeah, I'll, at the festival, I'll definitely you know play a handful of the songs from that record. Cool. And you're currently the Folk Alliance International Artist in Residence. What is what does that entail? Well, that was a great. Uh, you know, just surprised. I got a phone call. They said, would you like to be the artist in residence for Folk Alliance International? I said, wow, sure. What I did over uh, the course of three months was I collaborated with the National World War I Museum in Kansas City, Missouri, and went through their archives of letters and photographs and field recordings. I came across a woman, her name is Florence Hemphill, and she was a nurse in World War I in France. And I'd read all of these letters that she wrote in France and sent home to Kansas to her family. And I used those letters as the basis of a song that I wrote called The Letters of, of Florence Hemphill. I'm not particularly drawn to World War I. Mm-hmm. It's not like a thing of mine, but I think I'm interested in the human story of kind of resilience and how people um, kind of allowing their human story to be told. So that's what I did with that. I made a painting and a video and a song based on her life. Wow. You were a Seattle guy for a while, and then and then you moved to Ithaca. Yeah, I lived in Seattle for nine years, and what's kind of cool about living in Seattle is that I feel like I was all the way up there in the Northwest. I wasn't really touring. It was a little far removed for that. But what I did is kind of woodshed, I guess is the word for it. I was It was a place where I went, and I really worked on my songwriting and my musicianship and my kind of what was I doing artistically. I think that I I was holed up in the Northwest, you know, in a way, really working on my art and my craft. And I think when I moved east in 2004 to New York and I started touring, it was kind of one of those things, a realization that, oh, I have this batch of songs and this, you know, way of performing that I'd honed but nobody knew who I was, so I was able to kind of come and then say, like, wow, we've never heard of you, oh, we've never, you know, <laughs> and it was good for me. I think that maybe I notice sometimes people try to grow their career too soon and maybe before they worked on their art, mm-hmm. and I think, you know, it just happened that maybe being out in the Northwest allowed me to kind of just woodshed and really work on my craft before I started getting out and trying to put it out in public. And that was a good thing for me. Uh, when you were in Seattle, you spent some time working with troubled kids in jail. Yep. I did a project for about a year and a half where I would go down into uh, the basement of the juvenile detention center in prison in Seattle. And I would take keyboards and microphones and drum machines and recording equipment down into the jail cells, set them up, and then... What I was most interested, again, was kind of like storytelling. Who are you? What's your story? Let's craft songs and raps and poems and whatever you want to do. And basically spent, you know, about a year, um, um, every Monday and Wednesday, I'd go down there. It was an unbelievable experience for me just kind of hearing the stories and, and just creativity kind of like in a jail cell, getting creative. You know, it's it's sort of counterintuitive, but Mm -hmm. it's amazing what came out of that. And they taught me a lot about music. What was interesting about some of the, you know, youth who were locked up and their sense of music was like a lot of layers and beats. Mm -hmm. And they taught me how to think of a tune or a song as like seven or eight layers that all interlock together. And so they would lay down one simple beat and then they would add another beat on top of that. Then they would add, you know, and there was something about it. It was just like really struck me like, oh, yeah. When you're recording, you don't play everything all the time. It's like you leave holes and you and you allow this puzzle to kind of fit together. And uh, I really learned a lot about that from them, as well as, you know, life stories. And you are now living, you're hanging your hat in the very cool eco-village at Ithaca. Yeah, I live here. Uh, it's on about 200 acres in Ithaca, up on West Hill. Mm-hmm. It's a community. We have, you know, shared meals, and there's probably about 95 to 100 homes now. And, you know, we have, like, 
two lawnmowers and, you know, we share a lot of resources and good people. It's a great place for me to live and tour from. So when I go, I can, you know, come back home to kind of a community that knows me and I connect with. So it's really cool. It's, an, you know, a lot of solar panels and interest in being as sustainable as possible. An attempt to see how low the imprint can be on the, on the earth, you know. Graham and Otto in the Straw Bell Duplex over in Song. They're, they're pals of mine. Graham and Otto. Love them. They're great friends of mine, yep. Awesome people, and the whole gourd thing is so cool. Yep. They're, they're growing gourds, and Graham has a uh, gourd workshop right on the Eco Village grounds. You, uh, there is a video of you playing a gourd banjo, a very cool instrument. Graham uh, grew that gourd oh. that I'm playing, and her brother, uh, Pete, uh, built the instrument. You have a connection with Ireland a bit. Yeah, I have a connection with Ireland. I go there every year, probably the last six years now. I'm going to go back in July. Um, basically, what I do is I lead trips. I take about 22 people over every year, mm. and we go to the southwest of Ireland and just visit beautiful cultural sites and play a ton of music, and we sing together, and we go, you know, cultural sites and music and nature and and so it's an amazing trip uh if people are interested in that it's something that people can sign up for like they've always dreamed of going to ireland and they love music so it's a great combination of the two so if you know people want to go they can go is there information about that on your website yeah in fact on my website uh, joecookston.com there's a page that says ireland and then it has a lot of information about the trip and how to get a hold of me about it stuff like that yeah it's it's awesome to travel with a group of people who are really into it, mm -hmm. and we all just laugh and have a great time. And you do a, there's a Quaker thing that you do every year. Yeah, for a number of years, I'm, I'm not Quaker. What I, what I love maybe about the music that I'm doing is I think that there are different communities who, you know, for instance, I'll play a show and a Buddhist will come up to me and say, oh, I can tell you're Buddhist. <laughs> And I'll say, ah, thank you, you know. And then someone else will say, oh, you're a Quaker. I'm like, oh, thank you, you know. I think in a way, the music that I do and the write that I'm most interested in, it kind of mm, is being written and and kind of targeted towards this sort of core human quality in who we are. That's at least what I'm going for. And I think because of that, it may sometimes transcend sort of denomination or religion or or Republican, Democrat. I'm very interested in songs that it doesn't matter if you're left, right, Christian, pagan, you know, but th that there are qualities in this music that draw you to it. So I'm much more interested in that. So I was asked to, you know, be part of these Quaker retreats and conferences and that kind of thing. And, and they particularly really love the music that I sing. Um, and I love the Quaker community, for sure. It's all about people. Yeah, it's people. It's universal, you know? It's like universal, and humans are humans. And it doesn't mean, oh, we're all the same. I just do think there are some universal qualities that stitch us together. And at this point in my life and in the political, cultural, social dynamics out in our world. I'm just really much more interested in finding what is the place that stitches us together rather than divides us, because the Lord knows we have enough of that, you know? I have come to the end of my notes. Is there anything else that you want to cover? I would say mostly I think Ray, who is organizing, you know, the Roots Fest, uh, does an amazing job. I think he's uh, very excited and passionate. You know, basically, I just I'm excited to show up, bring great energy, and play for a lot of people who are really celebrating and having a great time in Dulles Falls. We've been talking to Joe Crookston. He's going to be playing Roots on the River this year. It's June 3rd through 5th. He's playing on the 4th and the 5th. And let's go out on Fall Down as the Rain. Thank you for taking the time and looking forward to seeing you. Thank you so much.
When my life is over and I have gone away I'm gonna leave this big old world and the trouble and the pain And if I get to heaven, I will not stay I'll turn myself around again and fall down as the rain When I finally reach the ground, I'll soak into the sod Turn myself around again, come up as golden rod Come up as golden rod, come up as golden rod Turn myself around again, come up as golden rod Come up as golden rod, come up as golden rod Turn myself around again, come up as golden rod Then when I turn dry and brown, I'll lay me down to rest Turn myself around again as part of an eagle's nest Part of an eagle's nest, part of an eagle's nest Turn myself around again as part of an eagle's nest Part of an eagle's nest, part of an eagle's nest Turn myself around again as part of an eagle's nest When that eagle learns to fly, I'll flutter from that tree, turn myself around again, it's part of the mystery, part of the mystery, part of the mystery, turn myself around again, it's part of the mystery, part of the mystery, part of the mystery. Turn myself around again as part of the mystery When my life is over and I have gone away I'm gonna leave this big old world and the trouble and the pain And if I get to heaven, I will not stay I'll turn myself around again and fall down as the rain Fall down as the rain, fall down as the rain Turn myself around again and fall down as the rain Fall down as the rain, fall down as the rain Turn myself around again and fall down as the rain